Petrified fish. Yes, it is. It's seafood, but it's been dehydrated. No, so bad that it's petrified. Um, interesting name for a knife brand, isn't it? Uh, but, oh well. Uh, if the knives are good, they're good, right? This one, my friends, is the PF959. As opposed to my previous video done on the PF949 in K110. This one's less expensive. This is in D2. Yes, we've checked their steels and they are real D2. Uh, and then, by the way, we don't just go 949, 959. We do 969 as well. This will be on another upcoming video that I haven't done yet. So, uh, but that's the 969T as in T-Rex. I don't know what's going on with that little hump in the cutout, but okay. And this is in K110 as well. This is more expensive -er because this was like $53.99 titanium pocket clip. They give you the lanyard and the bead and everything. Whereas these are like $35 bangers. But this was $53 or no, $59. But this is that carbon fiber G10 mix. So, uh, you know, we're just kind of going down petrified fish row. And I, 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 the previous model I had that was red, had red scales. I don't have it anymore. But that was the one I had tested for D2 and all that. Um, and, of course, D2 or the K110 is a bowler. Supposedly equivalent. Some people go, no, it's different. It's better than normal D2. Okay, whatever. Uh, you look at it under an analyzer gun and the elements read so much the same that the, uh, that the analyzer calls it D2. So, all right. Let's get the finer points. But you can get these knives, and these are good size knives, by the way. Um, let me show you my little paperwork thing. I bought it on AliExpress, the PF959, 39. See, you can get them in black blades. Did I say 35.99? Yeah, okay. Um, got different colors, and here's their stats, you know. So three and three quarter inch blade, 21 and a half. Uh, centimeters overall D2 and stone wash blah 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 bearings and we'll take one apart and then there's a partial blackened blade and then there's not blackened at all partial and then this and that so uh, you can get them however you want them and I told them no I want satin so you can order them however you want you got a whole bunch of choices there. But the gray, the reason I like gray is because it's something that I can throw in the dye. And I could dye this purple. I could dye this blue. Um, you could try with red. I don't know. I won't get into that. That's a whole different thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like the action on them. What I do like about petrified fish is if you take a look at them. And if you're a guy that's looked at these before and there's guys that have and guys that talk to me about them they're really nice designs uh, i mean they're attractive designs to me i i like the look of them and they're very inexpensive uh, as well so they're i mean they're a budget knife that's kind of a little bit off the rails if you haven't tried one yet and you want my recommendation this would be the first one but this might spoil you because see my review on this this is so, it's like velvet. I mean, this thing is so rounded and finished on the scales. It's, it's insane. And then not a bad looking knife either, is it? Yikes. So, but uh, this one here, obviously a little bit more crude because it's not the same material. It's not carbon fiber G10 mix and they haven't hand worked it all damn day. But uh, it's got a lot of machining. It's got more texture and grip than the 949 does. And this one, by the way, comes in like a, a G-Mascus look or a whatever. It's just, they got some freaky looks to that. Hopefully that stays in production for a while because they kind of come and go. So if you want to get one, it's not like you can wait three more years and just pick them up. Uh, so 
keep that in mind. You know, get while the getting's good. Backspacer matches the handle color. Deep carry, pocket clip. Uh, it's machined in and no left hand option, but it's machined in here. But the screws are not flat. So that takes away from some of the clearance over your pocket lip. All right, just make note of that. I mean, it's $39 shooter, so you can't have everything. I want to, but I can't. 30 to 35% lock up, easy to disengage. Once it's, once it's over the detent ball, like right here, then it just walks around. It's centered. No blade play, no lock rock. Let's go green. And there we go, right over the, and hit you in the thumb. I didn't get all the way, there it is. Okay, walks around, centered, no blade plate, no lock rock. So, yeah, you got to kind of step back here. Step aside, step aside. We'll bring the burger out front. Step aside, back here, and then, you know, because if you choke up on it too close, no, it's still not over the detent ball. So you got to be there. Okay, and it'll hit you in the thumb, let you know, get the hell out of the way. Here comes the blade. Oh, by the way, does the blade do anything? Let's hope so. And, wow, okay, next, and this one, yeah, no problem. How about, let's go to the 69. Oh, baby. Well, let's back up to the 49, We're going back in time, and that's good, too. So, yeah, they're all pretty sharp. Uh, with the K110 or the D2, it's going to be nice and easy uh, to maintain, right? It should be, at least. Uh, I just put them on my little strop Which one is it? This one, I think this is that chromium oxide on here. And then this is some other oxide. Crap, I forget. But you can see where I've been pulling steel, right? cut off of there but you know you can just you know you can just maintain them um, on the strop for a while i mean at some point in time you'll have to actually sharpen them but for now uh i can just bring them back after you know using them for four or five days just to tighten them up a little bit and nice little satin grind on it all that kind of thing stone wash flats this little cutaway here kind of keeps it interesting, keeps the blade from looking too monotonous. But, oh, man, that's some... Oh, well, well, let's take measurements. Like they said, they were saying that it's three and three quarter, and it is, and it is. That's 96 millimeters there. Cutting edge is damn near three and three quarters, okay? So that's not a big, huge choil area. Overall, not even eight and a half, more like 8.35 you know, so that's strange. 21 centimeters. That's a lot of blade on the overall length. Because, I mean, this one's about the same uh, overall length. And yet, two, three and a half, three and three quarter. Now, I'll guarantee you one thing. Uh, first of all, the Para 2 is way thinner and way lighter. So let's go to the... Let's so see the fatness scale on this baby. Holy moly. Oh man, 16 millimeters, 0.63 of fat ass dog. Come on. Too many cheeseburgers for you, buddy. And grams. Yikes, almost 150. Let's roll it around to ounces. I'm almost afraid to guess. Oh, well, that's, that's not that bad. Okay, a little over five ounces. No, nah, okay, that's reasonable. You got these liners, and they're not embedded. They show, but you got jimping along here. How's the flipper tab? Well, it's jimped, and it's not too obtuse. It's not too crazy looking, is it? I don't think that's that bad. Lanyard hole hanging out here. Standard kind of stuff for the hardware, the screws, this and that. Um, got their logo in front, got entree in the back, kind of see how that is. So it, it's tucked in here, but it's hanging out there, isn't it? Because they, they kind of 
contoured away from that. So, okay, it is what it is on both sides there. Click. Um, oh, I finally did it. Okay, so if I can do that, let's just call it maybe ooh, a 4.2. It's not, it's not real ultra strong. Oh, crap, I was trying to fail it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, crap, nah, no fail. Gale. Oh, shoot. I was going to say something else. No, uh, dang, yeah, I can't fail it. I got to be able to fail it. Okay, I did. Uh, I used my little trick of just kind of, okay. Um, yeah, so really... It's almost a no-fail knife, so I'd say the detent is is in there. I mean, it's fine. Oh, but spy this, right? Whoop de whoop. I mean, are we on Six Flags ride, or are we trying to get a hold of a knife? So let's hope your fingers were born in the right position for this knife. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> See, I sent him an impression of my hand. I gripped a thing of putty and it hardened up and I so they made it perfect for me so it's great for me and that's all it needs to be so don't worry about it it's good for me um eh, this is a little bit more tricky okay there I am but yeah this is this is a little bit more tricky for reverse grip and yeah I mean it's I I like a pistol grip on a 68 GTO, but I don't like it on this. That's for sure. No, mine was a Hurst. It was like a T-shift. Okay, never mind. But, yeah. Oh, was that more on the Dodge stuff, right? Was that on the Cuda and stuff, Challenger? Uh, but, yeah, and pistol grip on a knife, I don't know. I, I kind of dig it on the Halo Attack from Blackjack and some of that stuff. But I'm not, I'm not feeling it here, although it kind of adds to the interest from a style standpoint or design standpoint. But yeah, okay, okay. See, see where this is? Neutral. Neutral, my friend. And this one, the 69, neutral as well, isn't it? But the 59, they kind of went loop-de-loo. It's all right, though. You got some jimping back here, kind of get with you. Kind of just pulled this corner off to a square, didn't they? No no little beautiful rounded, you know, kind of stuff here. And even on, like, the Parrot 2, rounded around. Even on my Civivi Vexor, rounded around. This one's more squared off. Although, I do not like knives that winnow away. You know, like that. I don't like them when they get thinner near the end. I want it to either stay the same or whatever. But So this does give you a hoss out here to make good contact. And yes, I can feel the pocket clip. And yes, deep carry po pocket clips. You can feel them after a while. You know, I'll guarantee you, brother. You get on a cutting task and you'll wish you would have just took the pocket clip off. And put a lanyard on it and say hell with it. Um, but for putting in your pocket, yeah, I like them. I like them with flat screws, though. And there's some lefties out there say, I like them left, too. So you got left behind, un un unfortunately, on that aspect. Let's see where my balance is. Oh, wow, that's easy to find right there. So design flow is good. That flows into the bolster. That over here. And let me see. Blade to handle length is all she can be. And it's green like the arm me. So yeah, I mean, flow, length, all that kind of stuff. And I like this because it's three and three quarter uh, inches uh, blade. And I kind of like the bigger blades. And this is... Coming up on four millimeters, 3.7 millimeters at a 0.15. So that's some husky uh, blade stock on there too. So, I mean, it's it's a chunk, you know, they're, they're kind of these worker knives. I mean, they're, they're, they're meaty, you know, I mean, they're thick here. 
they're a, li a lot more weighty than something like this. This is 3.8 ounces. This is over five, so if that's a huge deal to you. But these are going to be beefy workers, and they got style. Now, let me, before I start tearing, yeah, it's a number six on the body screws. Hey, it's, it, you know, it's a $39 shooter, so I guess I'll give them a pass. As long as them damn screws come out worth crap. Uh, but I'd like to have number eights, and Civivi's doing that, and some others are starting to step up and go number eights on the body. And it sure makes it better, because these little tines are definitely more fragile than the bigger dogs, right? So... Let's start out here because we can't get in from the front. So let's pray. Let us pray that we can get in here. And I've got my stupid 8 plus in here. So I've got to get my non 8 plus. That's, that's too fat. Go back in my plus. So, you know, if you ever find yourself, by the way, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're not making good contact, you're wallowing around in there, it's not a tight fit, try these plus bits, a KC tool, see, there's the, there's the web number, and look for the Weira IP8 plus, and you can look at this, this number is probably, that, that's maybe their phone number, this is probably their, their item number. And, and on the number sixes, too. And the number six is even more important. So just a tip. But no, this is just the regular Weeha. And I get them from, and they're hardened German steel as well. But I see. And then this one will fit. See how it fits? But it's tight. There ain't no move. There's move on my driver, but there ain't not move on the much on the bit. And oh, okay. I scared it to death. It started coming out on its own damn near. Okay, good. But yeah, you know, think about that. Uh, it, I get people asking me about the bits I use. The drivers, who cares about? I mean, I think this was in a Ross dress for less or something. And this is skill, so. Uh, and this is a ratcheting one. You can move this on neither or off, you know. So I don't usually use the ratcheting motion that often, but, and then if you think you need some more oomph, get you, you know, a T-handle and put, you know, bits in there. You can really get some torque on it. But you gotta worry about it when you put too much on a small screw like these number sixes. You can just waller them out and you're done and you're all done, except for the crying. And screaming and cussing. And uh, what are we going to do? Hold on. Get out of I lost my... Jeez. Okay, forget about it. Damn it. I lost my blade stop. It just come out on me. Here's the screws. Okay. You're sequestered over here. There you go. See? Same size. Stop. Okay. Uh, ceramic detent ball. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's, you know, it's skeletonized out through here. Trying to get some weight relieving going on. Um, check this out. Yeah, ceramic. I mean, for 39 bucks, come on. Give it a shake. And what was that? Uh, some goober. Okay, I was just thinking, oh my God, is that a piece of steel? Um, and D-shape pivot. To that. I mean, I'm, I know I'm a freak about this talking about this but folks this will save you so much grief in your life right here i preach it i scream it because if you're going to do this and not give me a way to stabilize the front why are you gonna make a round pivot you put loctite in there the whole thing's gonna turn you're gonna have no way of stopping this from so you can break it away it's just ridiculous so there you go. And there's your presentation side, your liner, and yes, it's skeletonized. There's your uh, G10 backspacer, and it's pretty sweet, and you got the little D shape in here. Keeps this from turning, so bingo bango. And it just came apart like a dream. Even the body screws were good. 
All right. I mean, I know it's, this is a very, very complex, so pay attention. Any false move, and God only knows. We got to disarm the nuke. Okay, so here is the D shape. So roll your pivot around. Oh, there's the D shape, and it lines up with that. And it goes right into that little D shape and on through. Now, uh, let's find some goop. Uh, let's see, they say quart and a half, I think, per bearing. And uh, hold on, where's my stupid stop? Well, get in here. You... All right, there you go. Set it down, set it down, simmer down. And so you can see the track for the stop right here. The one way and the other, okay? Usually there's one stop pin, but I've run into some now that they've got two pins, one here and one there to stop, both open and closed. And let's knock my blade stop out. God dang, you going to be that particular? Wow. You're just barely sitting in there, aren't you? Okay, next. Come on. Come on. Um... And, of course, we would put the liner down separately if it wasn't already attached via the pocket clip screws. So, uh, because, you know, it's separate from that. It's not embedded in there. But we're going to just slap it on and pray that uh, blade stop doesn't fall out again, the fool. Okay. And snap. We're together. Let's do this. I can't remember how I got this ratchet set. <laughs> Probably to a no nothing, no no plus. Okay, yeah. So we're good. Um, body screws. Let's try and do that. Number one, number two. If I can see what I'm doing. If I can keep my fingers out of the way, I can see where the damn screw's going. Okay. And, come on. You know, $39 shooter comes apart, goes back together real easy. Yeah, that's a good thing. I mean, that makes me feel better about buying something in that range, doesn't it, you? Especially, I had the steel tested. You know, I can't remember if I did an HRC on any of the PF line um but if i haven't i'll try and make mental note to send some off to bj bj hill hilltop knives and gear check out his channel his instagram but um he's got a rockwell machine so he will do it for me he's got nothing better to do than run around and do crap for me right <laughs> he's busier than a one arm paper hanger um let me see. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. I guess I don't need to torque down on that pivot that much more. I think we're good. And there's no play, so. Uh, and it's centered up. Just perfect. Yeah, I, I like it. The ergos are fine for me, but, you know, it's particular that way. So if they'd have been more neutral, it'd been better. If they use number eights on the body, they'd be better. Um, and for the lefties, if they gave you a left tap hand option, that'd be better. To me, that's not a, a deduct because I'm right-handed. I like the blade shape. I like the design. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, maybe a little heavy for some of you guys, maybe a little bit too big, but, you know, uh, you in the trades or you're doing some hefty work around here or there, you want some knife that'll perform yet you don't have a lot of money in and also has great fidget factor, then this might be something you want to look into, especially if you like going off-road, getting away from the normal budget brands, the stuff that's always there, this and that. Just try something different and new. Um, yeah. Check it out, and you know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.